Sometimes the word should be there almost lonely, absolutely by itself, unadorned. Other times the word wants to hide and be cloaked in something flashing or dark or dire. It depends. So it's always a reconsideration every time you make a new work. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the medium will come first and it will want a certain sort of language. Other times the text comes and then it needs to be surrounded, embraced, hurt by some sort of material. Did you uh, find new aspects in Claire's work, working on this text, kind of maybe relevant to your own practice? I had always concentrated on the visual in Clay, not so much about his play with words and everything to do with words. So this was a revelation. I liked having an assignment. <laughs> so having looked at Clay's work maybe from a different perspective or more intensely, what if you met him, what would you want to have a conversation about with him? If I had met him, I would have been a little intimidated. Until I worked on this, I didn't realize how intelligent he was. I realized how good he was, but we all know not all artists are smart, but he clearly had both going. I would have liked to have spoken to him about language and his obsession with it um, and his appreciation of it and his play with it. Would you consider your work uh, with language as an obsession as well? I consider my work an obsession because it beats thinking about oneself every day in every way. Um, and language has been a go-to a thing for me. It is a good way uh, to convey meaning, but certainly not the only way. How uh, important is accessibility for you in your work? Like it may be a demo mm -hmm. in a democratic sort of sense, if you know what I mean. I started as a street artist, so accessibility has been a consideration. I want people to get what I put out, or at least be constructively mystified. Um, what's the reason for always using capital letters in your work? I went to all caps early on. By the second street poster, everything was capitalized and italicized to show some sense of urgency and to speak a bit loudly. And also for the text to look strong. In the street, there's a lot of competition. Um, would you today, uh, in 2017, still call yourself a feminist? I certainly hope I'm a feminist. What's wrong with women? <laughs> what touches you about Claire's work? I'm especially impressed that he could play rigorously and in such a disciplined and mysterious way. Um, play and rigor aren't always available together. Much of my work is on very tough subjects, so at moments humor has to be there to make things tolerable and um, play should be present. So it shows the great wealth of possibility in life and a, a reason for life. Why do you think you're drawn to tough subjects? Oh, that's a longer, longer, longer story about why I gravitate to tough subjects. Um, part of it is family dysfunction, that old answer, you know. Um, and the other part that's less pathological and reflexive uh, would be um, we don't need to work on joy, you know, that is um, something that takes care of itself and is sustaining, but uh, one must argue with cruelty, homicide, um, abuse of any sort, so um, I like to argue. I like that. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, maybe having walked through Pipi Lotiris installation before together, um, and she works mainly with light, whereas mm -hmm. you you have the one consistency that is words, mm -hmm. and but you always combine it or you use it with different material. Mm -hmm. How does that come about, or when do you decide um, this material need? Uh, this word or this uh, sentence needs that material. I was delighted to walk through Pipilati's installation because like clay, there is playfulness and intelligence and some mystery to boot. So uh, what a nice echo. Um, I often go to what's disembodied and what's temporal, what doesn't last and what's really not there. Uh, the light projections would exemplify that part of my practice. I also like things that uh, would last uh, perhaps indefinitely, whatever that word means, like carvings in stone. I've always been attracted to um, carvings that people have left through millennia. So like or carvings that also people put in trees or how do you... From, the, t from the time I was little, I loved looking at early carvings by Native Americans. That was a fascination. And now this has continued. For example, in Abu Dhabi, we have a Sumerian creation myth carved. Here's two creation myths.